Hello and welcome to Parklife looking ahead to Exeter City's game at Morecambe on Tuesday because who doesn't love a six hour journey on a Tuesday night? Coming up on today's show, we're here from Josh Key, Joel Randall and we also look back at Classic Encounter with Morecambe. But first, here are the highlights from Saturday's game against Carlisle United. Free kick level with the penalty area on the touchline, over it comes, and there's a shot and Parks has scored! They didn't pick up Tom Parks inside the penalty area, which is a crime in itself. It wasn't a header, it was a low shot past the goalkeeper, but nothing Furman could do. That's probably the first shot he's had to deal with, but it was almost point-blank range, and Tom Parks, his first goal of the season, sweeps Exeter City in front.
an ever-present in the team this season, filling in both defensively and in midfield, he's 20-year-old Josh Key. We heard from him ahead of today's game. One of the longest trips of the season tomorrow to face Morgan. A bit earlier kickoff, which will obviously help with the travelling. But um, tough place to go usually, isn't it? I mean, what, what are you going to expect from them tomorrow? Um, well, the funny thing is, like, I've, I've obviously, this is my first year, so I've never really experienced it. But no, I think we know that the conditions are going to be tough. I think it's set to be chucking it down. It's going to be very windy, as, it, as I've been told it is up there. Mm. Um, we know they're a very physical side. so. Um, and they'll get a lot of balls in the box and runners into the box. So I think a bit like Saturday, um, we've just got to be ready to defend for as much as we can, whether it means 90 minutes, mm. we've, got to, we've got to defend. And then the way they play, hopefully we can, we can counter with the speed we've got going forward um, and the quality we've got going forward and yeah, nullify what, they, what they've got really. Do you think as someone who's you know, new, new to League Two football, um, you go into games with a little bit of a different mindset to others who've maybe experienced it a lot and you, know, you don't have any expectations of some games or grounds or anything like that. So that could be a benefit for you, really. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of things, obviously, like things like no fans um, and things like that. I, I don't, I'm going to all these places and sort of seeing them for the first time. I don't really know the players who I'm playing against. So that in my head, I'm not thinking, oh, he's good at this. I just sort of, I play my game and work out what they've got in the game. So, yeah, I'd say, I say it is very helpful um, in that sense. And then I have the players around me who know the other teams, so you can, you can guide me, guide me in the right direction. So, yeah, I'd say that was right what you said. I mean, we're unbeaten away from home as well this season, but have drawn the last three. I guess it's, you know, time to try, maybe try and turn those draws into wins and keep pushing up the table as well. Yeah, definitely. I think we all know that obviously a win's, a win's better than a draw. And um, like, I don't know, the, like games like the South End game that you'd want to win, win really. And that's football. But um, yeah, we, we want to be, be starting to win more games. And I'd say hopefully by, hopefully if we're in the same place by Christmas, then, then we've got a good chance this year. So, um, but at the moment, we're just taking it game by game. And hopefully, yeah, we get some more wins, wins, in, the, uh, wins in the bank. Next, we catch up with club historian Will Barrett as he looks back in time at historic clashes with the Shrimpers. After what we will call a more than decent October, City kick off November by travelling to Morecambe for tonight's match. Now, looking back at this fixture, it is impossible not to think back, at least briefly, to 2007, when a goal from Lee Phillips was not quite enough to return us to the Football League. That, of course, would have to wait just one more year. Since meeting back up with the Shrimps in 2008, we have met on 17 occasions in League Two, winning seven, drawing seven and losing four. We have also scored 28 goals to Morecambe's 18 in that time. In terms of games on the road, the record books show that City have lost just twice in 13 trips to Morecambe's Lancastrian home. And we have won three of the last five games at the Mazuma Stadium. One of those came last time out in a topsy-turvy affair when two rapid goals from Jake Taylor and Lee Martin in the 21st and 25th minutes put City in a strong position, only to see the advantage wiped out by a brace from Luis Alessandra either side of half-time. However, Nicky Law was on hand once again to score a late goal to settle the tie and bring all three points back home to Devon. Do be sure to tune in tonight via iFollow and wherever you are cheering the lads on from. We hope that you are safe and well. We are a team that like to play football. I think there are a lot of sort of speculation about women's football and what to expect and stuff, but I think you're not going to know until you come and watch. And I think we are a team that like to keep the ball and play with possession. We like to play out from the back, play football. Yeah, build a nice build up. Play. Hello and welcome to a very, very wet St James's Park. We're going to give you a quick whistle-stop tour of the face in the crowd, as you can see in the Adam Stansfield stand and in the big bank behind me. So do see if you can spot yourself. As you can see, the stagecoach stand here is packed with all your faces. Unfortunately, the storm overnight has done its best to ruin our hard work, but we'll make sure we get those ones that have fallen over put up as soon as possible. So do see if you can spot yourself and let us know if you do. We'll uh, continue this tour as we go on.
So I found someone we recognise, uh, Lorcan, who's our volunteer in the media team. He's isolating at the moment due to someone he knows having COVID. So we wish everyone the best down there. But he does get to watch the game after all today, and I'm sure he'll be pleased. Here's Pete from the uh, Community Trust. I know he'll be pleased to see us himself here. And they're moving along a bit. I think this is a, a mutant ninja turtle, but it's also very terrifying, I must say. <laughs> Wilf Walsh, the uh, CEO of our club sponsors, Carpet Right. Welcome to the uh, Stagecoach Stand, Will. And um, Morris here, we'll all remember Morris from the car park. He's uh, still watching us in spirit and up there, I'm sure. As you can see, there's nearly 2,000 of these in the ground at the moment. So as you can imagine, if we tried to get a picture of every single one, it would take us hours, but we will make sure we get some block by block shots check yourself out again sorry about the weather it has wrecked some of them and they've knocked them over but we will make sure they get put back up so we're going to go along the stand now just along the front do see if you can spot yourself As you know, Tuesday is a huge day for this man, but it's also a huge day for Exeter City. More come away, which I think is more important than the US election, I must say. But as you can see, there were simply too many to fit into the stagecoach stand. So <laughs> the Adam Stansfield Foundation. We've got two of him for some reason, because who doesn't need a team of Tom Vickery's? And there's some former Grecians in the crowd as well. You might recognise Alan Tom from Commentries. He's been at a few of our away games this season. There's some more of you here as well. Like I said, do make sure to see if you can spot yourself. Send us in if you do spot yourself on social media. We'd love to see where we have placed you in the ground. It's time to rewind the clocks now back to October 2016 when goals from Joel Grant, David Wheeler and Lee Holmes secured a 3-0 victory for the Grecians at the Globe Arena.
Many of us know what Joel Randall is like on the pitch, but what about off it? We caught up with him to find out some of his football firsts. So, Joel, what was your first pair of football boots? Oh. Um, oh. The first pair I can remember, they're not my first pair of football boots, but I remember getting some white Predators for Christmas. They're, they stick in my mind. I think they're, they're a good boot. Do I don't think they're my first, but they're, they're, they're the ones that stay in my mind. Do you remember the first football kit you ever got bought as a child? Yeah, it was a, it was a Southampton one. I think it was must, yeah, a long time ago, but it was a Southampton one. The first game you ever attended? Um, I th- it was a Burnley game because I remember my dad was on the pitch. I think my dad went on the pitch at half time because obviously he played for Burnley. So I think me and my sister went onto the pitch there at half time with him. But I don't, I don't know who they played, but it, it was a Burnley game, I think. What was your first car? A blue polo. Great memories in that car. <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> memories. But yeah, it's... Probably driving it faster than it needed to go on. Yeah, de- yeah definitely. <laughs> what was your first pet? If you ever had one. <laughs> Probably a fish from the fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think it actually is. Probably a, a fish from the fair, to be honest. If you I'm count not, as a pet. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to go on about like under six football here, but like the first goal you can remember scoring. Um, what? I, when I was younger or... The earliest one you can remember. I can remember back playing for Barnsville Youth back in the day. I think I was, I, I don't know, it must have been eight or nine. And I remember shooting from a long distance out and it's looped over the goal and gone in that that was a good good goal I think probably the first one I can remember do you remember your first ever yellow card or red card red card you I don't think I'll pick up many red card or <laughs> yellows to be honest um I think I was out on loan at Biddeford and I've kicked the ball away I think and yeah it's not very good but I've, I've picked up a yellow there do you remember the first song you sang as an initiation song? Yeah, I do. I, it was in the 18s on the first away trip or whatever. I think I picked a One Direction song. It was <laughs> a bit silly, to be honest, but yeah, it didn't go down very well, I don't think. Have you done a, a first team initiation? I have, yeah. When we were in Jersey last pre-season, uh, Suspicious Minds by Elvis Presley. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't sing, so it's just terrible. You just want me off straight away, to be honest. Not, not like uh, Josh Key, then? Who, no, who nothing like Josh Key. Key. <laughs> this is the substitute, Alex Fisher. And they've pickpocketed them here. It's Joel Randall. Comes out here for a fine effort and a fine goal from Harry Kites. Pressure off the ball from the business. And now there's another chance here to find the equaliser. And this time it is tucked in by Matt Jay. Hey then, thanks for joining us. Uh, often yeah. seen behind the camera rather than in front of the computer. Um, you've been uh, with us the last few months helping to film matches for 360 and doing your own little ones which have been proved popular so far I mean how, how have you found it so far? Yes yeah, it's, it's obviously strange um, going in and, and seeing cardboard cutouts of the fans and not the real ones uh, but yeah it, it's been great I think I've kind of jumped in and really like the vibe of the, the media department apart from yourself um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the, the vibe is really good in there and, and everyone's kind of on the same level of, of kind of like the banter and and wanting to get that good content out um and at the minute like I said like jokes aside we haven't got the fans in uh so you know putting making them feel like they're there at the minute is, is super important um so yeah it's nice to have that feedback and it's nice to see people are you know able to kind of still have some element of, of match day in their homes even if it's just on twitter and instagram but yeah I'm having a lot of fun actually it's 
it's nice. We've uh, had some good feedback from some of the players as well. I've enjoyed your uh, the way you capture the shots and some of your photography as well. Yeah, that that's been nice, especially you know that was my wedding gift that that uh, that angle that shot at the end of the uh, scrum thought game. Um, but yeah, no, it is it is in all seriousness really lovely to have that feedback because as much as you know we're trying to put content out for the fans, it is nice for the players to get that um, that different view on the game and 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 that different. Um, you know, creative aspect of it, uh, whether that's from managing to grab a couple naughty stills um, when I'm not meant to be taking stills or, yeah, the video content. It's, it, yeah, just having them, some of them private message and just be like, really enjoyed the video or, or the video, yeah, uh, the photos, it's really, really nice. And uh, tell us a little bit about your background as well, because you've been, you sort of have a good skill set in terms of creating music videos and stuff. So this is, you know, a little bit different to that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, football's always kind of been, ingrained in me uh i played for Plymouth Argyle as a child uh yeah played for Plymouth, for, uh, Plymouth as a child and classic got injured and that was it uh you know the famous would have played for England but I got injured story um and then kind of stepped away from the football and and started training in uh, film and, and went to uni and studied film uh and then went from the kind of producer director side into a more videography side and, and picked up a camera just and did everything and, and did the photography too. And um, my kind of, my background was uh, working in kind of Broadway and, and West End working with artists and building relationships with those kind of talent and, and shooting content for them if they didn't have any. And then that kind of just made it like natural progression into, into music and I've shot artists like Love and Chase Atlantic and uh, Chelsea Cutler. And that's been really exciting. and kind of was just making a break for it and, and shooting for London in stereo, which I'm super grateful for. And then, yeah, I think I had a shoot for them. And about two weeks later, we had the first lockdown. Two or three weeks later, we had the first lockdown. And then um, having kind of built back up a relationship with football um, as a fan in the last two years, uh, as a big Newcastle United fan, way up Steve Bruce. Um, you know, the opportunity with Exeter came through. Uh, actually, that's not true. The opportunity with Tor Park um, up the tour, uh, came in and I shot a couple of games with them as, as football was allowed to come back to uh, existence as non-league. Um, obviously, league was back, uh, professionals back. And then, yeah, saw the extra position and got on the keyboard and typed away and you very kindly offered me a, a position with you guys and, and I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, it's nice to see how transitionable my music work is to, to football. It's, you know, the fast-paced editing and... and they are quite similar. It's it's quite surprising in terms of being there and on the match day. It, it does remind me of kind of being in a photo pit and, and grabbing that content. Mm. Um, and you get that kind of same buzz of excitement, you know, through the concert as you would get during doing the match. So, yeah, no, it's 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 really nice and it's it nice to have settled in and, you know, see that there is quite a nice home for me doing football while music is away. Um, and hopefully it will continue even when music's back. You know, I can't just go ditching the football now. I was going to ask, ask you, I mean, how it sort of compares, like, cause obviously, you know, there's no, you can't control any elements of that 90 minutes on the pitch. So, you know, you have to be very much on your game to make sure you don't miss a goal or a chance or something, don't you? Yeah, I mean, something that's quite similar is, is it is that, like, you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready to get that shot or that, um, you know, that still or whatever you're, you're trying to aim to achieve to get. Um, and it's been switched on and um, being focused and ready. It's it's very similar to, you know, um, the players or the performer, you know, you need to be switched on as well. And you're trying to give your best ability and your skills um, because, you know, you, you're there, you have an aim, you're trying to achieve it. Uh, and I think, you know, strangely, even lighting wise, um, when we've had really rainy Saturdays, which are most Saturdays, uh, <laughs> you've got, you know, the lighting of the, the grounds up um, and that's kind of like, stage lighting you know you have to get that camera setting ready you've got to you've got to be ready for a change of environment and and um yeah it's like i said it's it's strangely applicable um skill sets for shooting music as it is to shoot football um so yeah i feel like i kind of slotted in quite quickly and quite easily which is really cool um because i was you know i was fully expecting it to be such a different uh environment and situation but it isn't it is incredibly similar um 
and you do, it's quite nice to have slightly more room than a photo pit to move around. Uh, not that I don't want the fans back, but it is quite nice to have all the stands to manoeuvre around as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it's it's really nice. Um, and it's a lot of fun, actually. It's really fun. I mean, you joined us, you know, in a strange time for everyone, you know, empty grounds and that. I mean, how have you found just the match experience, you know, with no no crowd? Is, is that, do you think maybe there's less distraction on you in that sense? And, you you know, being able to stand at the top of the big bank and, you know, makes your focus maybe more on the game than everything else? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting because, you know, I've played games before and you don't really notice obviously you notice the fans there you notice the the crowd there um and obviously I don't want to keep drawing on music too heavily but it is it's my background and it's like you I usually have earplugs in you know well I try to always have them in because I will get tinnitus and die of uh deathness if I don't keep them in um so I'm kind of drowning out fans normally anyway um but I think for football and, and for live music it's it's part of it, isn't it? It's just mm. to have them there is it, the environment's different. It, it just feels different. Um, so kind of not having them there, it, it makes it more of a challenge to film. I would say even, mm. even more of a challenge because they give you a lot to work off uh, fans, fans and audience and, and crowds. They give you a lot to work off, whether that's sound, you know, um, cheering and, and chants and, and whatever, or screaming for the artist. Um, and even just having a slightly more interesting point mm. of reference to film um, because they really are, they, you know, they contribute so much to, to a live event because as much as football is football, it is, it's a live event, you know, people go and watch it. Um, and I'm, I am looking forward to having them back eventually when it's safe to do so. Um, but yeah, strangely, I think it is actually more difficult. I mean, in regards to positioning, like you said, it's nice to be able to film up in the stands, mm. um, but I'd much rather be, you know, stuck in a tiny corner trying to film some of the game and have them all roaring behind mm. um, and be able to film them and, and catch that audio, uh, then not have them. And, and they are really missed, I think. And I think that's probably a sentiment shared by, you know, the players and, and yeah. anyone that works for the club and the team. And um, yeah, strangely, it's probably more difficult, I'd say, because as I said to Zandi, it's what do you film? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. how, how interesting can I make the b-roll this week especially if you've got like 20 23 of them or something to do you know there's only so many shots of empty seats you can get in there. yeah it was you know it was quite cool to see it was nice to walk into the ground and just kind of see all the, the cardboard mm. versions of, of the fans that was it was quite cool to see and it was you know it was a bit sad in a way um obviously because they're not there and, and you know they are missed um and, you know, Exeter does have a fantastic group of fans that I know are willing to, obviously, um, travel up and down the country. Um, as those of us who support teams in the wider areas of the country uh, can appreciate. I've only seen one Newcastle United game in, in my, all my life. And hilariously, it was against Plymouth. So, you know, couldn't have travelled further up the country for that <laughs> one. Uh, um, <laughs> who are you going to watch and play? Uh, the team you currently play for and... Uh, they're going to play at St James's Park. Yeah. You um, your first game of us this season was Cambridge, I think, wasn't it? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. That means yeah. you know, no, any coincidence that City are unbeaten since that point as well. Well, I would like to think that I am the new omen of the club, uh, bringing that positive aura. Um, yeah. To be fair, we haven't lost. Uh, let's just you know, I'm there on Saturday for the FA Cup, so all I can say is watch out Europa League. <laughs> um, we're coming for you um, but yeah definitely coming for that promotion I think seeing City play this well is, is fantastic um, as I mentioned to you before we before we kicked into the Zoom um, interview that I've I've actually not seen City play and uh, I genuinely think St James's Park is a fab little ground um, and can't wait to see the fans in there uh, but yeah it's got a really nice feel to it the ground mm. it feels um, it reminds me a lot of uh, like you know, when you go to a pitch on a Saturday to play football and it gives, it has that kind of older feel to it mm. um, and obviously has the new, nice stand in and it, look, it looks fab. It's just, yeah, it's such a great ground and um, yeah, it's nice to call it home, I guess, at the minute. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was nice to come in, come in for a win and then just keep winning. So we can keep doing that. It's great. 
What do you make? Good vibe. What do you make of what you've seen so far? I mean, this season a lot different to last season. We've got a lot of, a lot of our own homegrown youngsters playing week in, week out, and you know they're all, they're all doing really well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I think I think Randall's making a lot of um, show on the side. He's he's exciting to watch. He's quick with the ball. Um, you know, obviously I'm looking for a camera for a lot of the game, but he catches the eye. You know, there's a lot of of movement there. Looking for players, looking to put it in the box. Um, and that's what you kind of want from a player. You want someone who's constantly trying to create goals. And I think that's really exciting. Um, and I think specifically from last week, you know, City were breaking on the counter. Um, and if, I think off the top of my head, if I'm right, I think two of the goals came from counters. I can't quite remember, but it's it's building on that. And it's um, they're looking hungry. I think that's exciting as well. It's a team that is looking to win. It's not looking to settle for that draw um, or play for a point. Um, we've been playing for the win. Um, and I think credit to the players and the manager for that because, you know, this is a team that deserves promotion. Um, I think they will get it this season and it's, yeah, it's it's fun to be in the ground and I really think the fans will be excited when they come back because um, they're looking strong, they're looking looking ready to win and um, you've got a strong back line as well uh, to come in, to keep the new keeper on loan like that, out of the blue kind of um, on that emergency loan. They looked strong at the back last week. Um, and I think again this weekend I'm excited to see um, what we create and yeah it's, it's really exciting football to watch especially when you know you're used to watching Prem games or mm-hmm. Bundesliga or you know just anything uh, they're looking really strong and a, a really good side actually and uh, the, from one country one side of the country to another tomorrow to face Morecambe I guess it's important to you know continue unbeaten October into, into November really and just keep picking yeah, yeah. away at those points I hope so. You know, it'd be nice to see them finish really high at the top of the se- uh, end of Christmas, coming up to Christmas, um, first half of the season. I think I think they definitely have it in them from a promotion. Um, I know they're disappointed not to have, have made it up previously, but I genuinely think it's a, it's a strong side. It's a side that definitely deserves it as well. Um, and yeah, I think you know, depending on what happens with COVID, I hope I hope the games do continue and and they can continue strongly and just keep building on what they have done so far. Um, but yeah, it's a strong side. It, it, they look fantastic, like I said, and I'm having a lot of fun filming them, uh, especially the keep winning. <laughs> um, and finally, like we ask everyone, I'll have to push you for a score prediction, see if you can get anywhere near. No one's got it bang on yet, so, you know, no pressure. What, just not... Oh. Well, last week I was, I was conflicted because I had a lovely loan season um, with... Was it Carlisle we played? Yeah, yeah Carlisle United. Uh, had a lovely loan season with them on FIFA. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was happy to get the win. So, oh, this weekend. We'll go for t- Tuesday. I'm feeling like a clean sheet. Oh, not, not FA Cup. Tomorrow's game, yeah, which is away at Morecambe, which is a tough mm. place to go always. I'm feeling, I'm feeling strong. Um, feeling a clean sheet. Maybe I'm feeling 2 0. 2 0 keeps coming yes. to me. 2 0 is the Good. one that I'm. A happy scoreline. Want, yeah, we want joyful scorelines. That's what we deserve. Ahead of a strong FA Cup run, that's exactly. what we want. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, we'll yeah, see you behind the camera you. again on Saturday. Yeah, I'm excited. I've just had a look at the uh, weather app, and it's going to rain. And always, that's literally yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on Park Life. We're heading off to Morecambe shortly. Check out some extra content we're going to try. Is we're going to try and vlog our journey. It's going to take us a while, but I'm sure it'll be a good one. Thanks for watching.